welcome to this eighth edition uh, of Ocean Hackathon webinar. So uh, my name is Maria Guillou and I'm the General Coordination Assistant for this eighth edition of Ocean Hackathon. So um, this webinar's uh, goal is to explain what is an Ocean Hackathon, uh, explain the course and each step of the event, and um, explain what is a challenge and uh, the concept of challenge with, within the, the Ocean Hackathon. So the call for challenges is uh, ending the 13th, uh, sorry, the, the 3rd of June, 30th of June, sorry. This webinar's aim is to help to inform and maybe to interest some uh, potential uh, challenge owners for this edition. So yeah, let's start. So first we're going to start with uh, the content of the webinar. Uh, Alice and Lidwun and Gisela, our, our panelists, are going to present a little bit the, the concept of Ocean Hackathon. Uh, after that, we're going to have the first session of Q&A uh, where I will ask them uh, your questions. So if you have left them in the chat box. After that, uh, Alice is going to present a little bit the data and the intele intellectual property rights. Um, and after that, we have another Q&A. And finally, I will talk a little bit about how uh, to submit a challenge. So yes, I let, I let Alice uh, take the hand. Hi, hello, uh, everybody. I, I am the the project manager at Technopole in the Campus Mondial de la Mer team. And I, I will share the floor today with uh, Lynn Wood Pendleton, who is the uh, executive director at Ocean Knowledge Action Network. So hello, Lynn Wood. Hello, everybody. Uh, so uh, Ocean Hackathon is an uh, event created in 2016 by Campus Mondial de la Mer. Campus Mondial de la Mer is a community of uh, world-class research centers and innovative companies in the field of the sea, uh, located in Brest, it's in Western Brittany, in West of France. Uh, it's uh, this community supported by local authorities, namely City of Brest and the Regional Council of Brittany. Originally based in Brest, Ocean Hackathon was extended in 2019 to other venues in France and beyond. Ocean Hackathon encourages sharing, the use of new technologies and an entrepreneurial spirit. It aims at federating a community uh, in each city where the event is organized, but also an international community it aims also at fostering innovation uh, related on uh, marine data and enhancing the use of this data, of this public data uh, for these projects. Uh, this public data are being collected by public organizations. So the rest resulting projects enhance the value of marine and maritime data, often by repurposing it. So we organize this event with the support of many partners. First, the ambassadors who perceive the sea as a field of innovation that must be appropriated, but also made known and protected. They help us to promote, promote Ocean Hackathon and also award the teams on the podium of the grand final. Ocean Knowledge Action Network is an international cross-network community that connects people who are working to bring together scientists and stakeholders. And Ocean Hackathon is a data-based hackathon, so our data partners are involved, uh, have a key role in Ocean Hackathon, and you will discover them during the second part of this webinar. At the beginning of uh, the process, at the beginning of Ocean Hackathon, there is people named challenge owners 
uh, who bring new ideas and would like to develop their project during Ocean Hackathon. Ocean Hackathon will take place this year simultaneously, sim simultaneously in 16 towns and cities and uh, from uh, 17 to 19 of November. To help them, uh, the challenge owners will have a multidisciplinary team. The team mates having uh, different skills like computer programming, web developing, marketing, ecology, or economy. The teams are set during the registration phase, which lasts for a few weeks before the local events. And during the Ocean Hackathon, the teams will work 48 hours nonstop in order to develop a prototype, which can be a mob mobile application, a website, a model, or a plugin. They will have access to data put at their disposal by, by data partners, and coaches will be available to help them on site and online to help them develop all aspects of their project, technical aspect, data processing, societal and environmental impact of the project, the business model of the project, and also to draw some perspectives. At the end of the weekend, the teams pitch their project in front of a local jury who designate the winning team. And this team will participate in the international grand final in Brest in December. It's a pitch contest in front of an international jury. And the first three teams are awarded for, with cash prizes of up to 5,000 euros. <laughs> In order, uh, so this year, uh, Ocean Hackathon is organized in 16 cities that, that you can discover on this map. Uh, you see Rimouski in Canada, Merida in Mexico City in Mexico, Conception in Chile. Uh, in France, uh, you have, uh, the event will be organized in Boulogne-sur-Mer, Brest, La Rochelle, Toulon, and also overseas in Numea, Cape Town. Uh, the event will be organized also in Europe, in Plymouth and Bournemouth in Great Britain, and in Peniche <laughs> at Portugal. And uh, finally, the event is also organized in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. So thanks to uh, the organizers in these cities to host Ocean Hackathon this year. Um, so uh, what is a challenge? Uh, a challenge um, uh, can be just an idea, uh, just the beginning of a project or a more mature project uh, we, who needs a, a boost, uh, who needs expertise to be developed. Uh, but uh, a challenge must be innovative, it must, must be linked to the sea, it must require the use of data, it's an important criteria, and lead to a concrete prototype at the end of the weekend. The topics of the challenge can be very various. Uh, uh, you see here some topics that you that can be uh, um, uh, tackled by challenges. Uh, some uh, regarding, for example, education uh, of the public uh, or um, um, topics regarding uh, the, the development of human activities on the coast of or on shore, uh, the protection of marine species, for example, the conservation of uh, species, and or, for example, how to face to marine pollutions, uh, and so on. The owner of a, a challenge can be an individual or can be an organization. So you can submit a challenge uh, for your organization, which can be a business or a company, or a research laboratory, or a non-profit organization, and so on. And but uh, it's very important to know that the challenge owner has to be present during the weekend in order to work with the team uh, uh, who will be uh, there during the weekend. 
So uh, if you want to discover all the challenges uh, tackled uh, last year during Ocean Hackathon, you can browse our uh, press kit and you will see all, all the challenges. And um, for example, here is the challenge uh, well known by Leadwood, uh, JellyGo. Uh, JellyGo uh, was submitted by CMAX uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, last year, and during the weekend, they developed a smartphone application uh, which was uh, uh, able, uh, able to predict the probability of encountering jellyfish in the waters around Penang. It was it was uh, use, uh, using AI to interpret sm smartphone photos to identify the type, type of jellyfish. Uh, it was able to provide species appropriate first aid advice to people uh, who would be uh, touched by jellyfish. And also uh, the, the application was able to call the nearest hospital. So you see a very complete uh, project and so the project uh, won Ocean Hackathon last year. So in order to give you a taste of Ocean Hackathon and, uh, let's, and to give you a flavor of, what, uh, of the local events, uh, let's discover the atmosphere in the 12 cities uh, where the event was hosted last year. Last year, the event uh, gathered more, more than 600 participants, uh, 70, 72 challenges uh, were tackled by the participants, and they had access to more than 600 data sets. Um, so, um, 
uh, Ocean Hackathon is a great opportunity uh, to benefit from the support of uh, uh, data experts and so on. So here are the great reasons to submit a challenge. First, you can during this weekend test your idea, your concept or boost an existing project by example, if you want to remove a technical uh, uh, barrier to, to your project, uh, it's opportun an opportunity to raise awareness of the potential of the ocean and the importance of preserving it. During the Ocean Hackathon weekend, you're, you can discover your local community, uh, the innovation stakeholders, the research stakeholders, and you can join also an international network. You, as you can see uh, in the, the video, the atmosphere is really friendly in all the cities. And uh, it's a good way also to find and develop uh, new talents. You will have uh, with, around you a team uh, to explore the side of your project and uh, you will have access to data and will, you will be able to work with experts. Here you can see the experts in Toulon uh, last year. And so it's a good way to, to increase your skills. Uh, we have also a testimony of uh, uh, a winner of Cape Town last year who participated in the grand final. So uh, I suggest uh, you we see his testimony. I was uh, representing CIFAR at the Ocean Act Forum 2023 International Grand Finale in Brest. Uh, CIFAR is a project that is aiming to mitigate illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing by harnessing machine learning algorithms and high frequency radar data technology typically used for monitoring uh, ocean surface currents. Main takeaways from the event, um, inspiration was a big one um, and just motivation being immersed in a, in a collective of like-minded people um, and having discussions outside of the kind of more narrow project scope um, of CIFAR alone. Um, it was a massive networking opportunity and it's, it fostered a lot of relationships that, are, that have been helpful um, to the project even to this day, <clears throat> down to connecting uh, with grant funders um, and potential um, future partners. And the next steps for us, yeah, we actually uh, registered the company about a week ago having developed our prototype during the 48 hour regional level of the hackathon. And now we're a fully registered company. We've got a 34 page business plan and we're seeking funding. So yeah, really grateful to the uh, organizers of the event. And I hope this information was helpful. So, uh... So before uh, moving to the question and answer uh, session, uh, I would like also to to let the floor to Linwood Pedalton, so executive executive director of Ocean Aken, in order to make a, make to us a, a summary and and the lesson learned from uh, his participation in Ocean Hackathon last year. Great, thank you, Alice, and I want to thank all of you because really these challenges are the core of the hackathon. You, you cannot win the hackathon with a weak challenge. And so the better the challenges are, the better the, the whole event is, and the more our participants get out of this. So thank you for joining us early to make sure that you really propose a good challenge. And I cannot um, express enough how important it is to think about how data might help you with your challenge. Uh, if, if your challenge really can answer questions about what, when, and where, data is likely to be very valuable for you. If your challenge is, really isn't focused on something like that, if it's about creating games or ocean literacy, it might be important, but if it doesn't have a really clear link to data, it's going to be very hard for your team. So when we think about what it could be, you know, what is the water quality of my beach? When will the tides affect groundwater? where are biodiversity hotspots. You may be um, 
creating a tool or an app that works in real time to tell us what's going on now might be predictive, or it could even be about something in the past, like how much carbon is in the blue carbon ecosystem where I'm standing, for instance. Um, we know at the Ocean Can that whenever you can work with end users in developing your tools and your science and research, it works better for them. So really be clear about who needs this thing that you want to build, who faces this challenge that you're expressing, um, and be really specific. If you have names of people, uh, that really brings it to life. If you're a user, make sure that everybody knows that and you really play the role of being a user when you have your team together. And then if you do know specific end users, um, can the team call them while they're working on their 48 hours? Can they get input? Can they get feedback? You know, these are the kinds of things. Be really creative about how you can bring your end users into this process. Now, Alice mentioned that we have sort of two ends of the spectrum. We have some projects that are rather mature um, and then some that are just ideas. And then I would say even some are just identifications of a problem that need to be solved. And from my personal perspective, the less well-formed the um, solution is, the more fun it is for the team because they have a lot more um, uh, ability to be creative. So even if you have a more mature project, make sure you provide ways for your team to come up with new ideas because this is really an opportunity for them to be creative, but it's an opportunity for you to learn things that you don't already know. Um, if it's just about sort of bringing people in to do the last minute work you need on your project, it's just not nearly as much fun. The whole time you're doing this, um, think about how you can leave as much room as possible for your team to be creative. Uh, diversity, we have found, is really good for these teams. And if they have a lot of different perspectives, they come up with really great ideas. And we tend to think about the people who are coming to these things as just being data oriented, but sometimes they're they're very much into design. And we've also found that some people are just extraordinarily good managers. So as the challenge owner, you might feel comfortable stepping back a little bit and giving one of your team members the opportunity to lead the team as you kind of watch and um, provide guidance. And then finally, um, it's important to remind your team the whole time about why it's so important that you answer your specific challenge. Why is your challenge important? That'll help motivate them, but it'll also help them keep their eye on why they're doing this and, and where they're heading with this. So I think if you remember these things, you know, allow for creativity, really focus on problems that require data and um, encourage your team to come up with ideas that may not have occurred to you. I think you'll come up with really important challenges. That's it for me, Alice. Thank you very much, uh, Linwood, for, for these this, uh, good advices to challenge owners and to, to the future teams that will tack, tackle the, the challenges in all cities. Um, uh, Maya, perhaps we have questions in the chat now. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, now, first, we have Francois who has. Uh, can you give insights regarding the intellectual property on the data that will be published by the partners? Uh, yes, we will discuss about this in the second part of the webinar. So I keep your question for uh, the second session. Then uh, what is expected from the challenge owner during the weekend? Uh, when do they have to be present? So uh, the challenge owner brings the idea, but uh, he also have, or she also have to, to be present during the weekend because it's very important to have a leader uh, to give uh, also uh, uh, the way where he wants to, to, to give a direction to the project. So it's very important to be there at, at the beginning of the weekend and also during all the weekend to be, uh, to be le to lead the, the team. So uh, if the channel owner is, is not here during the weekend, it's really difficult for the team to, to work efficiently, to go on the good direction and so on. Perhaps in Uda, uh, as you have seen some teams working, you can, uh, you can add something. Well, the only thing I would add, add is that it, it, the teams that we saw that worked the best were the ones where 
the, the challenge owner was present and receptive, but not over controlling. So it's really important, you know, that the challenge owner isn't trying to micromanage everything that the team does, but um, can be there to listen and reflect, especially if the challenge owner is an end user, understand what the end user needs. Okay, and when the challenge owner uh, is submitting, his, uh, submitting his challenge, he has to to uh, to confirm that he will be available during the weekend. So uh, the the rule is quite clear on the on this point. Yeah. Um, and we have a last question from Elida, that which asks. Uh, do the prototypes have to be digital, uh, like a app re or sorry, like or app related? Uh, could they be a book or ready to eat product? Uh, most of the case, the the results, the pro prototypes are digital, but it's not a rule really. Uh, we have seen projects uh, were were uh, more physical. For example, uh, in Brest, uh, many years ago, uh, a team developed uh, a model of uh, the bottoms and all the cultural heritage of the Bay of Brest in order to to um, to 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 give access to the maritime environment to blind people. So it was really a physical object, uh, but made from. Uh, an, from maps, uh, existing maps, and uh, and uh, digital information from data. So uh, the use of data is very important uh, because it's a criteria that will be uh, evaluated by uh, the jury. But uh, you are not obliged, really. It's not uh, mandatory to de develop a digital uh, prototype. And for example, we also had uh, uh, many years ago, uh, a soft developed with a new materials, for example. Uh, so uh, it was a physical object uh, and not uh, a digital uh, prototype. And, and I'll just add, while I have a hard time imagining an edible product, I can imagine um, a 3, 3D printed product. I could imagine a... Um, sort of a, a constantly updated guide um, to places you might want to go about biodiversity, for instance, that could be built on data. Uh, so I, I agree with Alice. There, there are ways of thinking about this, but it has to use data. And it can't just use a little bit of data. This is where I think we've seen some people really try to stretch the rules and, and they don't do well, is if they're just using a little bit of information. There's a wealth of data out there, ocean data and the ocean hackathon was really created to get more out of this information that we have. And it has many different kinds of variables, um, many different types of data, many different ways of collecting and interpreting the data. And so if you can really take advantage of that, you'll do well. It's a good point. Thank you very much, Linwood. Um, so, the questions are finished, yes? Okay, so thank you very much, Aline Wood, for, uh, but you can stay for the second question and answer on, and cessation if we have uh, also a uh, uh, philosophical question like this on what the uh, Ocean Hackathon is. Uh, we will move now uh, to the second part of the webinar, more focused on data and uh, intellectual property rights. So, um, uh, Ocean Hackathon is a great opportunity to benefit from the support of uh, data partners, the data experts during uh, this weekend, because they will provide uh, you with data. So many kinds of data. We will like, have a look on, on this uh, just after. They will also provide you with tool, tools uh, that will help you to browse the data, to access the data, and to process the data during the weekend, to integrate your prototype, uh, your data in a view viewer that you can embed in your prototype, for example. 
And also the data port partners will provide you with their expertise during the, the preparation uh, of Ocean Hackathon because they will analyze uh, your challenges. So they will prepare data sets according to your data needs. And during the event, the coaches uh, will be available uh, on site and online and some uh, speed learning session will be also organized in cities and tutorials uh, will be at your proposal at your disposal so uh, you see that data partners provide a lot of things during ocean hackathon so these data partners can be global so it means that they will provide data and support to all teams according according to the needs and they can be also be local so it means that the organizers uh, also establish partnerships with local research centers for example or with public or private stakeholders that can provide data to the teams uh, so um excuse me <laughs> so uh, the data uh, that will uh, be provided can be already on open uh, access, can be already public, but uh, not always easy to find. So it's why it's interesting to, to participate in Ocean Hackathon, but it can also be pre private uh, data. So uh, the data provided can cover small areas or be available at the global scale. It depends really of the data partners and the, the kind of data. And they can cover also um, uh, many time scales. So uh, be available for short periods or uh, at longer periods, or it can also be for cats, for example. And uh, the data can be of several different kinds. Uh, so you can have some data on delimitation, for example, uh, data that are from in-situ observations, data that are the results of models, uh, or data that are satellite-derived pro products, for example, or uh, pictures. So, um, uh, our partners, uh, our global partners um, uh, can have data covering a large scope of themes because they are national, European or international research centers and public operators. So they manage uh, every day cutting edge marine research and they publish reference information. So in, they are involved in the development of the open science and data access. So uh, these uh, partners have um, very multi-thematic part, uh, data on biometry, for example, on biology, on chemistry, uh, on geology, on human activities, on, on physics, and on, this, on seabed habitats, for example. We also have... Um, uh, some data partners uh, which have data on oceanographic forecasts, for example, Metro France and Shone. Uh, on They have nautical charts. They have data on maritime boundaries, on sedimentology, on the position of cables and wrecks. So um, you, you will have access to such data. Some uh, some of our data partners are more specific. So, for example, uh, the CEDRE is a, a French state-approved association. It has been operating in France and abroad for nearly 48, 40 years. And so we have data and reports, for example, on accidental water pollution events, but also uh, on plastic pollution. So uh, they will provide expertise on, on this topic. We also have partners that are more focused on biodiversity and because they are, they are, they are also in charge of the protection of marine protected areas. So it's a case of the French Agency for Biodiversity, Patrinat and uh, 
the uh, system for um, marine environment. Um, and so they will provide data on species standards and uh, on species observations. Uh, and now I will let the floor to Gisela Morinigo, uh, for, who is from Global Fishing Watch, because she will uh, uh, show you uh, data we, which will be available for Ocean Agaton participants. Thank you. So. Great. Thank you, Alice. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. Um, so a little intro uh, first. So Global Fishing Watch is an international NGO using satellite technology, machine learning and data visualization to build an accurate picture of human activity at sea through free and open data and tools. Um, so our work supports greater transparency, uh, novel scientific research, sustainable use of our ocean and reduction of illegal and regulated and unreported fishing. Um, so I am, my name is Gisela Morinigo. I'm based in, in Argentina. Um, I'm the product manager of our APIs, which is uh, one of the products that we'll be offering in the hackathon. And we are really happy to participate in this event as data provider for, for the first time. Um, so our data is, uh, we, sh we have a fishing activity at global scale. And is uh, for now mainly uh, AIS derived data since uh, 2012 and is based on our peer review research. Um, since we use uh, AIS satellite data, uh, you can find data uh, at high seas, for example. Um, and currently uh, we are offering our data through uh, our API and the and R package that was developed by our research team. So we have continuously updated data from 2012 uh, until 72 hours ago. Um, um, in our uh, public uh, API portal, we are uh, publishing that data, fishing efforts. We have, you can discover fishing part patterns for nearly 70,000 vessel broadcasting AIS uh, data. We also have fishing events. So based on the, uh, on the, we have different machine learning models in order to identify uh, fishing activities. And then based on the, on the identification, we have uh, fishing events where you can see a summary of that activity. We also have vessel search and identity. So you can search for fishing carrier and support vessels through different identifiers. And it has information derived from AIS cell reported data. You can also find encounters, and these are the data about possible transhumans events uh, on a global scale uh, for improved knowledge of at sea catch transfer. You can also have loitering. Um, loitering, the idea is that it will uh, allow you to uh, verify if it's a possible potential at sea encounter and transhuman event. You also we also have Port visits, so you can find data on port visits and patterns on vessel behavior across space and time. And lately this year, we released two more uh, APIs, which are the uh, statistics API, where you can get fishing activity and event statistics for the whole world or a specific region. And again, as I mentioned, we have this uh, GFWR package where you can access all this API uh, through uh, R. Um, and there, I will be sending on the chat the links to um, our API portal where you can start checking and see what data we have today that will be offered. And also our map, which is uh, displaying this data and more data that will be offered in, in, this, uh, in this event. Um, the next one, Alice, please. Uh, because for this specific event, we wanted to open more data than what we have in our API portal. Um, and and just for the participants, we will have the intentional uh, AIS disabled in events. Um, if you have used in the past uh, AIS data, it's a really powerful tool for monitoring vessel activity, but it wasn't originally designed uh, that way. It is a maritime navigation safety system that was created to help vessel track each other and avoid collisions. But uh, AIS devices can be intentionally disabled for different reasons. 
um, including to hide product efficient spot uh, from competitors and to potentially mask illegal activity. And our research team has been working and released um, a data set that includes events where fishing vessels intentionally disable their vessel tracking system. So all of this data uh, will be available through the API. We will also open in the, the radar, uh, radar detection scientific aperture radar. So we have um, the scientific aperture radar can detect at sea vessels and structure in any weather condition. And this is something that since we want to make sure that our data uh, can offer and give visibility on what is happening uh, in the, at sea, uh, this data will allow to, to, have, uh, to be used in comparison with the IAS. So when the IAS is not turned off, turned on, then the SAR images can be used. And we are going to be uh, showing vessel detections when they are matched with our IAS vessels and when they are not matched. Uh, and this data is from Sentinel-1 imaginary. So the different data sets uh, are from different time periods. In this case, for the, the SAR, uh, we have from January 2022, but the, the events on IES are from 2012. So uh, it depends on the data, uh, the range of period. Then also we want to include improved vessel identity. Um, so far, what I mentioned before, was vessel identity based on what self-reported uh, AIS device, so what is reported on, on, the, on the device. And we are going to be including uh, information from uh, 40 public registries. These include regional fisheries management organization uh, registries, national registries, and lists compiled by researchers. Um, so in order to add more details of the different vessels, and the last one is that we have been working in having in giving more insights about a vessel. So we will uh, expose an, an API where you can find information about IEU listed vessels, AIS coverage, and summary uh, event information. For example, uh, encounters in in foreign uh, sets or encounters uh, fishing events in in no take NPA. So the idea is to give. Uh, from the list of events that you can see in the previous slide. So uh, originally we are giving you all the details and with this vessel insight, we try to uh, highlight some of those events that we think are important to, to review. Um, so that's why we want to give. And obviously, as Alice said, once the challenges are created, we will be reviewing that and see if we can offer uh, any other data. Thank you very much, Isera. Uh... Global Fishing Watch uh, is a new partner of Ocean Hackathon, and uh, we are very happy that such uh, topics uh, will be able to be uh, tackled during the during uh, Ocean Hackathon. Uh, thanks to this partnership, so thank you very much. So. Um, Regarding AIS data, you will be able to have access to data, not only on uh, regarding fishing boats, but uh, more generally the maritime traffic, uh, thanks to two partners also, CEREMA and University of Le Havre, who have data at the global scale and also for French maritime areas. So you can have access to the maritime traffic uh, uh, on this basis. Um, uh, we have also many data partners uh, who have satellite data. Uh, satellite data can be used for many projects. Uh, they give information on the ocean color, on the sea temperature, on the sea uh, on the currents, and so on. So uh, such data can be very useful also. So Mercator Océan International, Copernicus Marine Service, Wikio, Odatis have such products, and Ifremer also. So we have many uh, partners uh, with, with such data and also partners uh, who provide expertise when we analyze the data needs of the challenges. It's the case, for example, with uh, Bretel and uh, Polmer Bretagne Atlantic. So, uh, the, as you can see, there is a lot of in data uh, that will be pre prepared for the challenges. 
and uh, in order to to allow the participants to find their way in the data, uh, a data catalog will be available uh, during the event, and uh, we will open it uh, a few days before uh, the Ocean Hackathon weekend. So uh, it will contain records for data sets and also uh, records for data data portal existing data portals so uh, you will have a selection of uh, good uh, good sources uh, available in this data catalog uh, this data catalog is developed on an ifromers uh, data infrastructure so we thank you very much ifromer for this for for his involvement uh, in this in the development of this catalog So uh, the, data, the data catalog is a very good uh, tool to browse, to discover, to access the data, but you will also, also have access to, to other tools. For uh, example, Indigeo uh, is a special data infrastructure. Uh, we developed uh, a viewer, which offers the possibility of finding, organizing, and visualizing uh, the, the spatial data, and share maps or embed them into web page, for example. Uh, so it can be really useful to prototype a web application in the context of, of Ocean Hackathon. Wikio uh, will provide data, but also tools during the event. So uh, cloud processing environments, virtual machines, Jupyter Lab for processing the data, and also uh, a user support during the weekend. So uh, before the event, uh, you will be able to ask access uh, to these tools. And also, if a team needs data storage for their own data, they can use uh, the data, uh, the data more uh, infrastructure of Ifromer. So uh, we can host your data during the event uh, if you need it. So um, now, a piece of advice if you are interested in. Uh, submitting a challenge to Ocean Hackathon regarding the data. Uh, to obtain accurate data and tools for Ocean Hackathon, it's uh, very important that you refine uh, your proposal when you submit your challenge. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that we just ask a prototype during the weekend, and sometimes it, it can be very useful to reduce the spatial and the temporal scale of the project in order to, to have complexity, to keep the complexity uh, of your project. Uh, so uh, it's such information will be asked uh, in the form. Uh, please indicate in su sufficient detail your project and the data you need in this form. Uh, this will uh, maximize your chance of obtaining uh, truly usable data during the weekend. And uh, please feel free to discuss uh, before the event, before uh, submitting your challenge, for example, with the organizers uh, in your city. So, and to ask your questions so that uh, you will be able to, to fill in this form uh, the best, on the best way. Um, and we discussed discussed a lot of the data that we will be at your disposal. You can also, if you want, bring your own data, especially if you are a research center, you have your data. And uh, so if you want to use your own data, let uh, your local organizers know if you need the storage capacity. So you have seen that we have uh, tools, some storage capacity. So we just have to, to have it in mind uh, before the event. And uh, you can indicate also how you will uh, make the data available for, for your team. So to sh how you will share the data with your teams. Uh, and if you want to share your data with other teams, uh, because you think it, it can be of interest for other teams, we will help you to publish your data in the Ocean Hackathon data catalog. Um, so now uh, a very uh, uh, awaited uh, moment of this webinar. So some key information regarding the intellectual property rights, because 
it's very important for the data partners, but also for the challenge owner, uh, challenge owners. So uh, there is intellectual property rights on the data and tools that will be available during the weekend. So uh, you will find information in the rules of Ocean Akaton. When you submit your challenge, you have to to accept the rules, so to read the rules before. So uh, all we provide is available during the Ocean Hackathon weekend, but if the project continues after the Ocean Hackathon event, uh, there are there are some legal, uh, there is some rights on, on this data and tools. And so uh, there must be a written agreement between uh, the participant and the wild holders before any other use. And regarding the results and uh, the prototypes, um, uh, the, the rights are, uh, there is two cases. It depends uh, if the challenge uh, owner is an individual or if he submitted uh, the challenge uh, on behalf of his organization. If uh, the challenge owner is a legal entity, for example, uh, a company, uh, a research laboratory and so on, the legal entity holds the property rights for the results and their exploitation. So the teammates uh, have no rights on if on it, even if except if uh, the uh, the challenge owner there is a, an agreement with the challenge owner. Okay, and if uh, the challenge owner is a private individual. So uh, each team made all the rights to exploit the results without the agreement of the others. So uh, you see that we have uh, two, two cases uh, that are described in the rules of Ocean Hackathon. So um, I have finished. Perhaps we have questions, uh, Maya? Well, we, we have we had a question but i think you did answer it it was if a company proposes a challenge of one of the on one of their issues and a team creates it creates an interesting prototype who does it belong to have you seen this case before so i, I think you've answered the question yes uh, we highly recommend that this uh, that the proper intellectual property rights are di discussed at the beginning of Ocean Hackathon in the team. So uh, the challenge owner discuss of it with the challenge, uh, with his teammates. So all this is clear for everybody. But uh, yes, if the challenge owner is a company, the results belongs to, to the company. And so uh, the teammates who can be uh, students and so on will have no rights on, on the results. Okay, and last but not least, it's not a question, but a commentary from Ocean Hub Africa, who says, great addition for this year, talking about Global Fishing Watch. So yeah, I think um, they're right. Thank you very much for joining us this year. <laughs> and I think that's all for the journey. I don't see any other questions. And I had one point I wanted to jump in and make too. If I can, which is um, Alice talked about how you can bring your own data and use that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your challenge should be about a new way of going out and collecting data. The idea is really to use existing data, whether it's your own or whether it's the kind of data that's provided by Global Fishing Watch or the many data partners. So if you create a challenge that's all about using some new device that can go out and collect new data, um, that's not what this is about. This is really about using existing data and creating something from that. Thank you very much, Linwood. Yes, that's right. Um... Yes. Um, so we will end up here because it's up to you to submit a challenge if you're interested. So yeah, we hope we inspired you to maybe uh, submit a challenge. Um, yes, thank you. 
So yes, you should know that a challenge might be submitted in one city, uh, the, the one where you can be available from the 17th to 19th of November, but uh, there's a few, or, or maybe they will be a few uh, cities that will do uh, maybe only, uh, sorry, on-site events, maybe online events, maybe a, like a, a hybrid, like a mix of the two. So um, uh, you just have to, to uh, check on which local edition uh, does what, but for now, maybe we don't have a lot of clues, but uh, you can go to the, the www.oceanhackathon.fr and you will access the, the Hackathon 2023 page where you have a little map, uh, you can select your city and uh, you will be available to access uh, a link and uh, the, the, the link of the form to submit a challenge and you have to submit it before the, the, the 30, 13th, I will say 30th of June uh, of 2023. So yes, uh, we really hope that uh, we may have motivated a few uh, people to submit a challenge. So if you have uh, any question on the, the local events, like for example, if it's an hybrid or, or online uh, events, you can ask the representative of the local edition. You have the email address uh, right here on the, the, the page you will access, where, the page where you can submit your challenge, sorry. <clears throat> and I think uh, that's so. Yes, so yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to our panelists, to Tisela, to Linwood, to um, Alice, and to Juliet. Um, and thanks to everyone who, who just uh, attend this, this meeting. And uh, I think I forget anything. So yes, we are at your disposal. If you need anything, any information, and yes, thank you. Thank you a lot. Merci beaucoup, as we say in French. <laughs> thank you very much, Maya. Thanks you to everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.